All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and wow. I know this delays the sale of the team, but this is crazy. There is a new highest Washington commander bidder. A new challenger emerges again. We now officially know all of the mystery, well, guys, that used to be mystery bidders for the commanders. We now know every party that's involved. Every time we got a new one, we were like, well, there's still a mystery one out there, and what's going on? Now we officially know all of the people that are involved with trying to buy this team, at least the head of each party. There's different parties competing against each other, and I just think it's really interesting that this Brian Davis one, name-wise, is the one that's offering the most. You would think that Josh Harris, Mitchell Rails, Magic Johnson, and whatever combination of people they have over there would have the highest bid. Of course, ignoring Jeff Bezos, because if Jeff Bezos wants to come in and offer a bid, he can outbid everybody and they wouldn't be able to do anything about it. But this Brian Davis guy, former Duke basketball player, apparently has the highest bid to date and recently bid on the team. And I have a lot of questions. First of all, how does this guy even have the highest bid? Where did he scramble up $7 billion? Like, this just does not seem like the guy that will have $7 billion. I didn't even know who this guy was until I saw this announcement and then read up on the situation. I'm not of age to know who a Brian Davis is. I know a Baron Davis did not know who a Brian Davis was until I did further research into this situation. So this is really interesting, man. Again, this delays the sell of the team, but ultimately, if this helps us get a better owner, then delay it a little bit if you need to. And also, I have some updates for Dan Snyder as far as the owner's meetings are going because this man is out here dodging interviews and questions, man. He is not playing. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, make sure you pull up every Sunday for the live Commander's Call-In Show where I open up the phone lines and y'all call in you voice your opinions you ask whatever questions you may have we talked about lamar jackson sam howe coaching draft sleepers free agency everything this past sunday make sure you pull up every time we do that may not be able to do it this sunday but be on the lookout for when i can i'm gonna let y'all know ahead of time and stay tuned for all of the content man without further ado let's get it All right, so according to Junkies Radio, it's reported that Brian Davis, the basketball player with Duke University from 1988 to 1992, is putting together an offer to buy the Commanders for $7 billion, which is more than a billion dollars higher than the previous highest bidding offer, which was somewhere below $6 million, somewhere around $5.5. This outbids them by more than a billion dollars, which is insane. That sounds like the type of bid that Jeff Bezos would have came in and made. Now, does this make Jeff Bezos Bezos not interested? Is he not willing to try to outbid that? Is he just like, well, now that the offer is at $7 billion, it would take me $8 billion to get it, so I'm no longer interested? Or is he just like, all right, bet, I guess I'm going to have to up it to $8 billion. So I'm very interested in seeing how Jeff Bezos reacts to this, but that's another story. That's just speculation for now. And I'm hearing from different sources that this $7 billion is legit. Like, this is not just a rumor. This is, he's officially put it in. And it happened a few days ago, and it's just being reported today. I guess with all of the owners meeting stuff, going on and everybody's in the same place things are starting to leak out but that is crazy a former duke player is bidding seven billion dollars i didn't even think we would necessarily get above six unless jeff bezos stepped in and without jeff bezos stepping in we're at seven billion remember you need to have some more billions to the side for this stadium thing coming up so i don't know how he was able to put together seven billion with the expectation of having to hold on to a couple of more billion on the side just for the stadium where is this money coming from but most importantly this is really interesting because now we kind of understand why things were dragging out a little bit why we just heard that we went from within the red zone to now first and goal just a few days ago and then things seem to take a step back since then this is probably why there may be other factors included but this is one of the main reasons why the of the team has been delayed because Dan Snyder was probably looking at Josh Harris's offer maybe listening to Jeff Bezos who signed an NDA so Jeff Bezos is involved he signed a non-disclosure agreement and everything and it was even reported from people close to the situation that Dan Snyder does not mind Jeff Bezos buying the team like we previously thought 
talked about that in the previous video. But either way, Josh Harris had the highest bid. Jeff Bezos felt like he could potentially come in with the highest bid if he was interested enough, and there's clear interest there. And then out of nowhere, this guy comes in. I mean, we had mystery bidders. Out of nowhere came Steve A, the Canadian. We had Tillman Fertitta for a while who already toured the facilities, just like Josh Harris already toured the facilities in the stadium and everything. And then out of nowhere, we have Brian Davis reported today. So now we know all of the mystery bidders as well. We knew who Josh Harris was. We knew Jeff Bezos was involved in some way. And we knew Tillman Fertitta for a while now, but we still had those two mystery parties. Now we know everybody who's playing a part and we have four different groups trying to outbid each other. And then you have Jeff Bezos as kind of like a fifth one who hasn't officially placed a bid. But there is interest there. Again, he signed a non-disclosure agreement. There's at least some interest there, even if he doesn't feel like outbidding Brian Davis for $7 billion. But shouts out to Scott Jennings from Hogs Haven. He said the junkies reported a scoop on the sale of the Washington Commanders this morning on their show on 1067 The Fan. Brian Davis, who played college basketball at Duke and professionally for the Minnesota Timberwolves, has made a cash offer of $7 billion to buy the team from Dan and tanya snyder this offer was reportedly made last week and davis is said to have up to nine billion dollars available through a group of investors who are these guys are they the illuminati like where is this money coming from and what did he do to earn the respect of these guys and the trust of these guys for them to invest in him to do this because we're gonna dive into his backstory and his whole attachment to christian leitner and all of his chaos that he got going on himself as in leitner but like what did brian davis say or do what kind of powerpoint presentation did he put together to get nine billion dollars invested in him for buying this team but of course brian davis is local and went to bladensburg high school in maryland he has businesses in real estate and also founded dc united holdings with his friend christian leitner which owns dc united davis and leitner were bought out in 2009 there's very little information about the group that davis has reportedly put together if this offer is legitimate and the davis this group is vetted and approved by the NFL. This will be the biggest offer linked to a potential bidder so far. Tillman Fertitta reportedly bid over $5.5 billion. Josh Harris recently added local billionaire Mitchell Rails along with Magic Johnson to his ownership group. They have been considered the favorites as the process has gone on for the last four months. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has also been in the mix, but there hasn't been any confirmation that he has placed a bid on the team. Canadian billionaire Steve A, because again, I still don't exactly know how to pronounce that last name, has has toured the stadium and team headquarters but there hasn't been a confirmation that he has placed a bid now let's dive into brian davis he and his teammates won two ncaa championships and davis was a second round draft pick of the phoenix suns in the 1992 draft i wasn't even born yet davis played the 1993 season for the minnesota timberwolves his only official nba action and averaged just five and a half minutes per game that year but his nba career isn't the only thing that failed to live up to his collegiate success in 2006 davis and former blue devils teammate christian leitner entered into an agreement to purchase 70 percent of the nba's memphis grizzlies at the time of the agreement davis had also indicated that leitner would return to play for the grizzlies as well which is really weird that deal fell through because of insufficient funding so hey man i don't like the fact that davis has a track record of trying to buy something saying he will and then not having the money when it's time to pay the deal fell through again because of insufficient funding however and the end result included hurt feelings and lawsuits including nba legend scotty pippen suing both men resulting in a 2.55 million dollar judgment additionally the two teammates started a real estate company that resulted in more broken promises and even more millions of dollars in lawsuits in 2016 it was reported that leitner owed more than 14 million to several creditors and private individuals including former nfl running back jonathan Stewart. It's unclear how much of that 2016 debt reported also involves Davis, but many of the business missteps taken by Leitner over the years have involved his teammate being right by his side. And that's certainly something that's going to give NFL owners pause before considering the approval of Davis as a new owner in Washington, if it even gets to that point. So it's really interesting. This is chaotic because apparently he has the highest bid for the commanders right now with seven billion dollars but he has a track record of when it's time to pay up he doesn't have it 
reportedly he has these guys backing him that are investing nine billion dollars in him to buy it but how much is he even contributing on his own does he even have a billion dollars to his name why are they including him if he needs eight more billion at worst case scenario best case scenario he's only getting eight billion from those other guys he already has a billion himself which i doubt i don't think he does so why are these guys with all of this money willing to invest it into him buying the team and backing him rather than them just buying the team as a group without him i'm still confused about that as well and then again the sketchy history of every time they try to do something there's lawsuits resulting from it so now the nfl owners are going to be like yeah he has the highest bid and dan snyder that's cool but are you sure you want to do this i know after you sell the team it may not be your problem but if this guy's check bounces you're going to be just as confused and as hurt as us so this is another reason why things are delayed because of course when you hear new highest bidder has come forward of course the nfl is at least going to look into it and then now if dan snyder was potentially close to selling the team to josh harris or maybe jeff bezos was close to making a bid now this guy at the very least causes everybody to take a step back and analyze everything and then the fact that his backstory is very sketchy when it comes to money especially big deals like buying franchises and they've fallen through they've ended in lawsuits and things like that of course the nfl's got to take even longer to dive into his past to see is this real and to look into whoever is investing in this guy and put nine billion dollars behind him because again this guy does not have that type of money so i'm still confused as to why these people are putting that money behind him rather than just doing it themselves do they not want to be the face of it are they trying to stay hidden and, and stay unknown as far as this goes i don't know but i feel like ultimately if he were to buy this team in some way if the nfl were actually to trust him after other people have trusted him and got burned for it we would find out who these nine billion dollars worth of investors are anyway so i'm still really confused by the logic of that and a lot of this just sounds so random and it's hard to really believe because again with this guy having such a terrible past in investments and dealing with money and buying organizations i'm surprised that they even took this seriously even if he does have a real seven billion dollar bid on the table with nine billion dollars to spend again who are these guys but okay moving on from brian davis just to talk about Dan Snyder a little bit and what's going on at the owners meeting. First of all, John Com tweeted, multiple sources familiar with the commander sale expressed skepticism that an announcement will be made regarding a new owner at the NFL's meetings. Of course, Brian Davis's new bid plays a lot into this, but even without him, it may not have been announced officially by the owners meetings anyway. Also, Dan Snyder's plane is indeed in Phoenix and it was an 11 hour flight for him. I hope it was boring the whole way there and they didn't have any movies to watch. Dan Snyder has declined to be interviewed by Mary Jo White thus far as she conducts the NFL's second investigation into him and the commanders. White is expected to make at least one more attempt. So is Dan Snyder not legally abided to actually go through with these interviews is he just gonna keep saying no i don't want to talk and then mary joe white just can't do anything about it that's really interesting also really funny darren m haynes interviewed dolphins head coach mike mcdaniel about his three years coaching for washington and again just another genius prodigy head coach that washington had in their grasp and let go and now they're a head coach somewhere doing great things but when darren haynes told mike mcdaniel how much the team was worth his quote was the team is worth that much and i couldn't even get free coffee and i just thought that was hilarious dan snyder man you just got to do right by people that he's one of the main reasons why a lot of these great coaches i mean i feel like there needs to be a documentary on all of the great coaches that the commanders had under them at one point and they just ended up leaving and going elsewhere and being top tier coaches that needs to be investigated in itself like why are we able to find these dominant in the roughs in the first place how do we bring so many geniuses in as just small assistant coaches with minor roles and then even worse how do we let them go and i'm pretty sure dan snyder plays a large role into that because again i mean the first thing he thought of from his time in washington was the business is worth that much and i couldn't even get free coffee that just provides more validity to the whole free agency grading system that the commanders just are the worst in so many different things training facilities and cafeteria travel accommodations how they treat teams families with a guy like that saying it it's just like yeah y'all been doing these plays these coaches the staff 
completely dirty since Dan Snyder's been there. I mean, just the worst of the worst. Because that coffee probably meant a lot to him when he was young and trying to make a come up in the NFL rankings and things like that. Probably didn't have that much money. And it's just like, man, this guy's worth billions and he just doesn't care about us to the point that we can't even get free coffee type of thing. So I understand, man. Dan Snyder, every day we just get a new reason for why you gotta go. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like on this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. As always, man, I appreciate all the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. Whose name is he scrolling the screen right now? How do you feel about this Brian Davis situation, man? Do you trust him, even with the past that he has? Do you feel like even though he has the biggest offer, is it safe to even allow him to buy the team? Do you want him to buy the team? Will he be your favorite candidate? Or would you hate him even more than everybody else that's already bid on the team? And of course, man, I appreciate the support again. Please leave a like on this video on the way out. It's free for y'all and it means the world to me. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out. Oh.